Welcome one, welcome all. We've definitely had a surge of remasters within the last few years, and I for one actually really like it. It's a great way to discover games from the past that I've missed, or revisit some favourites with a, a bit of a modern sheen. And the Nintendo Switch has definitely been flying the flag for good quality remasters. So, without further ado, here's part one of my little list of the best remasters on the Nintendo Switch. Turok 3 Shadow of Oblivion Originally launched all the way back in the year 2000, this is a very faithful remaster of the classic first-person shooter adventure game, now presented in HD with modern controls, and as the name suggests, it's the third in the trilogy. You can get the first two on the Nintendo Switch, they're all worth playing, this is just my favourite in the trilogy. Choose from either Daniel or Joseph, they both have their own unique abilities, so there is a good difference between the two characters. You've got a total of 16 weapons per character to choose from. You can jump straight into this. It's got a very unique world, which I'm personally really enjoying revisiting, and I think you would too. It's also, of course, in the same universe as the first two, so if you want to go back and play them, doesn't matter what order, you'll still enjoy them. Are you ready to take on the mantle of the new Turok? A personal favourite of mine, Destroy All Humans. I originally discovered this franchise with the original game way back when on the original Xbox when it was current gen. And it is now back with a really good layer of polish it's kept faithful to the story. It's got the majority of the original controls, but they're really easy to get used to. Honestly, it played like a modern game more or less at the time anyway. And it will make you laugh all the way through. You take on the role of Crypto, short for Crypto Spiridion, an alien scout sent to investigate Earth and see if it's ripe for invasion. You're directed by Author Pox, maintaining his place in the mothership, hovering somewhere above Earth. And wouldn't you know it, you've arrived in 1950s America, just like the majority of Alien Invasion B-movies were set once upon a time. And you can easily see the influence it's taken from those films. It really works well. And for once, you get to be the alien. You get to be the bad guy, which, if I'm honest, is a lot more fun. I cannot stress enough how much fun this game is. They all are, actually, in the franchise. I know they've remastered two. I'm hoping they'll bring the rest to modern consoles soon anyway. You've got an open world to explore. You can body snatch, use psychokinesis, a wide variety of alien weapons, and even fly the saucer and destroy entire towns. It's a riot from start to finish, the voice of Crypto sounds strangely familiar, like a beloved actor. It's not him, but it's a very good impression. And yeah, I cannot recommend this enough. It is possibly one of my favourite games on this list. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. We need more games which are really good fun and funny. Because this ticks that box like nothing else can. If elected, I promise to... Destroy all furies! That is seriously messed up. Blood Rain 1 and 2. Couldn't pick a favourite, so I'm going to talk about them both. They're regularly on sale on the eShop for the Nintendo Switch, and for the amount of fun on offer, they're an absolute bargain. These are two more 6th generation games given a new layer of polish, a new lease of life. You take on the role of Rain, a part vampire, part human. You're working for a secret society, keeping humanity safe from the supernatural forces which would mean them harm. Embark on a globe-trotting, blood-soaked adventure battling all manner of supernatural beasties. Oh, and Nazis! I forgot to mention, you can take on the Nazis as well, as this is set in 1933 and 1938. 
It's good non-stop vampire biting fun as you control the sexy aerobatic protagonist all the way through. Hack and slash, shoot, jump and flip your way all through this very entertaining world. And once you've finished with that, jump forward in time to the early 2000s in Blood Rain 2. Again, you're still controlling the titular rain. The graphics on this, I think, look actually slightly better. This sequel does rain well as she confronts her father, who just happens to be a bit of a big deal in the vampire world. He's called Kagan, and you find out through him, you have some siblings. Unfortunately, though, it's not a lovely family reunion, as you find that they are all your enemies. Seriously, not one on your side. Sibling unity be damned, apparently. But it does make for some very, very interesting fight scenes and boss fights. I love this game. It reminds me a tiny bit of the Underworld films, and it just ticks all the boxes for me. Enthralling story, fantastic protagonist, great gameplay. Give it a go. What do you think of me now, father? And now to a Nintendo property and a very applauded remaster with Metroid Prime re remastered. That's why it's on the list. This is a lesson in how to remaster a game properly. It is just done so, so well. You are in a first person view for the majority of the game. You only change to third person when you take on the form of the Morph Ball. It's had a complete visual overhaul to make it feel like a current gen game on the Nintendo Switch. You've got a new modern control scheme, but the option to go for the classic controls if you wish. It's got fantastically improved physics, and this game, which was one of the best selling on the GameCube, in fact, it was the best selling Metroid game until Metroid Dread came along, is now given a new lease of life that it really deserves. Absolute masterpiece. And now to one of the greatest franchises in gaming history with one of the greatest characters ever created. Lara Croft in the Tomb Raider trilogy. This gives you her first three adventures, Tomb Raider 1, 2 and 3. And they've been very clever with this because they've given you the ability to play it with a modern layer of polish, so the graphics are substantially improved, and modern controls, or to switch back to classic graphics and classic controls, keeping everybody happy. Whether you're a die-hard fan who doesn't think that there should have been any changes to the originals and you still like tank controls because you're a sucker for punishment, or you want to rediscover them and play them in a more, let's say, familiar way. I'm going to hold my head up above water here and say I much prefer the modern controls, but let me know what you think. Taking on a property which has got so much love from its dedicated fan base and remastering it or changing it in any way, actually, is truly a very brave thing to do because it's virtually impossible to keep everybody happy. But they've done the impossible. They've achieved it. The stories, the platforming, the combat, it still holds up today. These games were in many ways ahead of their time. Some of the first great 3D adventure games on the first PlayStation. They're still loved today for a very good reason. And they're probably still some of Lara's best outings. Please give these a go. Honestly, just, just play them. I've got nothing else to say. Play these games. Okay, I might be cheating just a teeny tiny bit here by putting Breath of the Wild on, but it was a launch title for the Switch and is one of the most popular games still on the entire platform, for very good reason. Don't forget, this was originally released on Nintendo's ill-fated Wii U, and I have seen it said on many YouTube videos that it plays better on Nintendo Switch, so it must have been improved a little bit, right? Either way, I'm popping it on because it wasn't originally released on the Nintendo Switch, but boy did it find its home there. Definitely one of Nintendo Switch's 
best games, and to say that about a launch game all these years later speaks for itself really. There has been so much said about this game that I don't think I can add a tremendous amount to it, other than if you haven't played it, forget all you know about Zelda games and be prepared for a really pleasant surprise. It looks great, it plays great. For a long time, it was argued between Mario Odyssey and this game, which was the best on the entire Switch. Many people say Tears of the Kingdom has overtaken this game. I'm not sure, I'd like to know your thoughts, so let me know in the comments below. And also let me know if I'm cheating by putting it on here. I don't think I am, and let's face it, it's a great game. A originally 7th gen game remastered in stunning HD. And boy, if you think this is a GTA clone, you're in for a very pleasant surprise. You are stroke word of president when aliens invaded. You get thrust into a very wacky world, I'll let you play the game to discover how and why. And you get everything from every type of weapon you can imagine to superpowers. Talk about a fun sandbox where you can do pretty much anything you want. It's wacky, it's zany, it's everything Saints Row should be. And considering it's unlikely we're going to get a new entry in the series anytime soon, thanks to its 2022 entry going down about as well as a fart in an elevator, it's the perfect time to revisit these classic games in the best way possible. Oh, and you can get Saints Row the 3rd on Switch as well, which is also absolutely brilliant. There aren't many games like this on Switch, but these are excellent. And to end, I want to put an honorary mention on the list, because, well, it's not a remaster, it's a collection of games, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Cowabunga Collection. I just wanted to mention this because a lot of these games, if you want to get them on original hardware, are very expensive, so very hard to play. But if you don't want to play through emulation, you still want to actually own something physically, this is a great way to access these games. It's quite affordable, usually less than 20 quid, and it is a selection of some fantastic classic beat-em-ups. As I said, not a remaster, definitely just a collection, but I wanted to mention it to you, because if you've missed out on playing these games, you don't need to now. Thank you for watching part one of this list. Parts two and three will be coming soon. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch, and if you want to press the like or subscribe button, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you soon. Ta-da for now.